Hey guys, just another quick video for those three or four people who are interested in flying aeroplanes in Japan. You'll remember on the last video we got as far as the private pilot certificate. Uh, the next step in the process was the uh, medical uh, class two for a private pilot. It's a uh, class two medical. Uh, so there's only five, I believe there's only five uh, aviation medical examiners in Japan uh, and they're sort of spread around the country. So I was reasonably lucky there was one two hours from where I live. So you uh, know, in a, in a pro, uh, public hospital, which is interesting. In Australia we have to go to uh, private clinics for these things. So um, interesting, it was a public hospital in Japan. So went uh, went to the public hospital. I had to complete a couple of pages of questions, questionnaire, medical questions, you know, uh, about medical history and that sort of thing. Uh, and then took my own blood pressure. That was interesting. Uh, they had a machine just inside the, or in the waiting room, just inside the entrance of the hospital. Uh, in a waiting room, there was a uh, blood pressure machine and you just sit down and put your arm in there and it does it automatically and then it prints out a little ticket at the end that has your blood pressure on it. And that's actually pretty common. You see those in hospitals and clinics uh, and you also see them in public buildings like uh, city, city halls and uh, government buildings, public buildings, uh, sports centres and all that sort of thing. Very common. Just have them in a public area somewhere with a seat there. You just sit down, stick your arm in and it just does it all automatically, pumps up and takes it a reading and then prints that little ticket at the end with your blood pressure on it. So um, do that <clears throat> and then uh, <clears throat> oh, before I go on I'll just mention too this whole process again as with the rest of the process you're either going to need a pretty good level of Japanese uh, or you're going to need someone with you who's a very good translator because again everything was Japanese all the paperwork uh, all the questions and the instructions and you'll see from the process there was a lot of instructions that came at different stages of the process and it was important to understand Japanese to be able to understand what, what they were talking about and to answer their questions. So, so I took my own blood pressure uh, and then they give you a folder, a little plastic uh, envelope, basically a big envelope, big plastic envelope with little pockets on it uh, and it, little pictures and it's basically, it's basically a checklist. It's just a checklist to make sure uh, for, for, for me to understand what's going on, but also for the, the staff to know that I've gone through each step and gone to each different room. So that the envelope's actually got little pictures on it to show you the different steps, but it's also got a map on it to show you where the rooms are. It's really efficient. It's really efficient. As you'll see, there was a lot involved in this, but the whole process took about four and a half hours. So it was, it was pretty efficient. It was pretty efficient. So, it's all my own blood pressure. I've got the, the folder with the little cards on it. Uh, oh, I peed in a cup, and you know they usually get you to pee in a cup. Uh, in Australia, they send you, they give you a cup and they send you off to the bathroom, and you go off and you pee in the cup, and then you bring it back and walk through the waiting room, and everybody watches you walk in with a cup of pee, hoping you don't drop it, and you walk over and you put it on the counter. And I think that's pretty common, isn't it? Most countries, a lot of countries are similar, sort of fairly public sort of cup of pee <laughs> but in Japan really civilized you go into the bathroom uh, there's a special bathroom for this and you go into the bathroom and you have you have a cup and you pee in the cup and then there's a little window in the bathroom open the little window and when you open the window it rings a bell so you open the window you put the cup in there you close the little window and you walk back into the waiting room and there's some staff member on the other side of there. There's two windows. They can't see you. There's two windows. There's some little staff member or some staff member comes along and takes your cup and goes off and does the rest of the process, which is only a little detail, but I thought it was quite nice. Uh, <clears throat> chest chest x-ray, just a standard check, chest x-ray. Uh, and then a brain scan. And that was pretty amazing. In Australia, I had a commercial pilot license with an aerobatic endorsement. So... I had to do a class one medical in Australia and class one medical was pretty thorough uh, but there was no brain scan so the Japanese class two for a private pilot is much more complex than the class one medical for a commercial pilot with a aerobatic endorsement in Australia. 
So the Japan system is much more strict, the medical system, the medical certificate system is much more strict. So, so you're off to the brain for a brain scan and that was an amazing process. That was lying in a dark room, hooked up to the machine and after they've hooked, hooked up all the, the wires, just lie in the dark room, in the dark, for 20 minutes. And I gather it's just to give them sort of a starting point. And they say, close your eyes and just lie still, but don't fall asleep, and you just lie there in the dark. And then they, they try to give you a uh, epileptic fit, or try to get you to react epileptically. So they flash strobe lights in your eyes at different speeds to try and upset your, your brain. And, to, and to, to test you to see if they can give you an ep epileptic fit, I guess, uh, or see if you get some sort of negative reaction from you. And that was pretty intense, different speeds, stopping, starting, different speeds. Uh, and they did that for a while. And then they, uh, then they try to get you to hyperventilate. So they, they tell you to breathe in for three seconds and then out for one second. So in slowly, deeply, and then out. And, and they say in out, in, out, and they're telling you to do it three seconds in, one second out, and they keep you doing it, they keep you doing it for I don't know how long it was, but until I, until I was close to hyperventilating and I could feel my lips getting numb and I could feel my fingers tingling, and so again they're testing you to see if you're going to hyperventilate and if you're going to pass out, so <clears throat> very physical, the brain scan, the whole brain scan tests were very physical, at the end of that I was quite phased, but uh, uh, and then off for the eye tests, after the brain scan test and all the strobe lights and messing with your head, then they send you off for the eye tests. <laughs> so the eye tests in Japan is not A, B, C, D, uh, alphabet, Roman alphabet chart. It's uh, look into a machine and you can you see a circle with a hole in it. So it's going to look like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. And you have to say left, right, up or down. Hidari Miki Ue Start, and you have to tell them which one it is. And they go down until they get smaller and smaller and smaller, and both eyes. And then they send oh, then, uh, a book with lines in it, and you have to do the same thing up, down, left, right thing. And then uh, off to another room, and they've got the uh, field of view test. So if you haven't done that before, it's like half a, half a uh, big ball, or half an egg, half a giant egg big half dome like this, big dome, white dome like this and it's got one little hole in the middle of it and, and you put your head, you put your head in the opening here and they strap your head in so that all you can see is this big white dome all around your head uh, and then there's a little white, little white dot that appears and they do it one eye and they do it the other eye and the little dot appears all over this, all over this egg thing Every time the dot appears, you've got to hit the button. And uh, it's basically testing your field of view to see if you've got any blind spots, basically. So that's a, that's a pretty uncomfortable test. Your head's really wedged in there, and it takes quite some time because they have to test your whole field of view. So again, that's a fairly... After the brain scan, then doing that one, that's... Um, by the time you finish that one, you, it's hard to focus because your eyes have been in this sort of a white environment for, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. Again, fairly physical. That's not so unusual, that test. I've been through that one in Australia, but it wasn't part of the Class 1 medical. It was a, an addition thing. Um, then hearing test, you know, the thing, put the, head, the headset on and, and you've got to push the button when you hear the tone. And they go through the range of tones, you know, from high to low. And every time you hear a beep, you've got to push the button. Um, and then you go to see the doctor and do the ear, nose and throat thing. So it looks in your ears, looks up your nose, looks down your throat. Oh, then the heart monitor te uh, check, so uh, go and lie on a bed, and they hook up wires all over your heart, onto your hands, onto your feet too, I think they did, so there's wires all over the place, and, uh, and check the heart. So it was, it was complex, it was much more complex than, well, you know, for, it was a private pilot medical, class 2 medical, but it was much more complex than the Australian, you know, the one I did in Australia for a commercial pilot with a, a, you know, aerobatic endorsement. Was, was much less complex than this private pilot one. So, so that's a, a Japanese class two medical, uh, and it cost uh, Ichiman Yonsen, which is uh, about $400. So it's about twice what it costs in Australia for a, for a class one. So again, the cost, 
you know, the cost of everything when it comes to aviation in Japan is two or three or four times what it is in other countries. That's why if Japanese guys want to become pilots, usually they go to another country. Uh, China's popular, they go to China and get pilot licenses there or go to America or go to Australia and get pilot licenses in other countries because Japan's one of the most expensive countries in the world for flying. So, so um, you do all that and then if, if it all goes okay, they actually give the brain scan thing to a neurosurgeon or a neurosurgeon specialist, they give it to a specialist so you don't get your results straight away. And if you manage to get through it, um, a couple of days later, uh, one of these turns up in the post. So I got through that. So basically now we've got the pilot certificate, private pilot, private pilot certificate, and have the class, class 2 medical. So right to fly. Um, the only thing I haven't got now is the radio license, which is, as we covered before in the video, the other video, it's very uh, difficult. Uh, so that's the next step. But as long as I've got somebody with a radio license on board the aeroplane, uh, I can fly pilot command. So next step is to, to find an aeroplane and go for a flight. So stand by for that. <laughs> More videos coming soon.